Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. In video number 105, we introduced IoTAppStory.com as a Christmas gift. It is still in an experimental phase, but was well received and many users created an account, tried to download the ready-made apps, or even started to build their own apps based on my examples. I'm pretty sure that even if you never will use this infrastructure, you will learn some tricks for your own programming skills during this episode. Today I will show you how you can easily port your current applications to be compatible with IoTAppStory.com. After that port, they can be remotely updated over the air. You even can change the app to a completely new one without touching the device. Credentials and other parameters can be filled in with your smartphone or browser, also over the air. DNS is used instead of IP addresses, so you can work with device names. You get a serial monitor-like remote debugging using the very fast UDP protocol. Feedback is given with an LED if available. You can switch between the different modes using a button. A first word of warning, currently there are no security features available, so you use this platform on your own risk. We do not quality check any sketches. So it is not advisable that you use it to run your atomic power plant, if you have one of course. But let's now start with a block diagram. Because I experienced some interference with Wi-Fi Manager and my sketches, I decided to separate the configuration mode completely from the run mode. A long press of the button switches from run to configuration mode. The button is connected to a change interrupt, so you can press the button whenever you want and it will be registered. Back from config to run is done automatically after you successfully press the exit button in the config screen. Because the state of the board is stored in EEPROM, it returns into the respective mode even if you reset it. The sketch has the usual structure. Setup, loop, functions and libraries. Setup and loop already are populated by some code which is necessary for the infrastructure but you find clearly marked places where you can insert your code in both areas. Of course, you can add as many custom-made functions if you need. There are also standard libraries necessary. If your sketch needs additional ones, just add them as always. There is no need to add anything in the setup or loop part of the configuration mode. If you want to add additional setup parameters in the configuration screen, you can do that in the Wi-Fi manager part. I will show this later on. Anyway, consult its documentation if needed for this part. You find the link in the description. The whole code is divided in three parts. The normal sketch, the file iothelpers.h, which helps standard functionality which has to be adapted according your needs. An example is Wi-Fi manager because each sketch needs different configuration parameters. This file therefore is placed in the same directory as the sketch. And third, the file ESP helpers contains all functions which do not need to be adapted. Therefore, this file is located in the libraries folder and is used by all sketches. To show you how you can port your application to the platform, I use the simplest example, the Blink sketch. The only complication, we want to be able to choose the Blink pin after uploading the sketch. First, we write our sketch the conventional way. I used the example file and just assigned a variable to the Blink pin. We can now upload and test it the conventional way. And we see it runs. To enable this file for all the nice things of iotappstory.com, we first copy the ESP helpers folder from GitHub into our libraries folder. Then we copy the empty sketch folder called virgin soil in the sketches folder and rename both the eno file and the folder according our wishes. I call it turboblink. 
Now we start with transferring the code of our conventional Blink sketch into the newly created turboblink.ino file. As a first action, we name our sketch turboblink and the version 1.0. While scrolling down, we find the different sections. The libraries, the pin definitions, the defines, the services, enums and structures, variables and functions. Each of these sections have a standard part and a sketch specific part. Because we need a variable blink pin, we transfer this variable into the section variable sketch specific. A word to the functions section. Usually this section is not necessary for Arduino sketches because the linker takes care of it. Because we work with different .h files, we have to help the linker a little. Always, when you get an error message that the IDE does not find a function, even if it is there, just enter its definition here and the error will go away. So, we are done with this section and come to the setup section. Here you see two expressions, debug underscore print line and UDP debug underscore print text. These are used for debugging. If the variable serial debug is defined at the top of the sketch, we can read the debug print line messages on serial monitor. If remote debugging is defined, we get the UDP debug print text messages in our UDP monitor. Each UDP line has to begin with a UDP debug start and end with a UDP debug send. I will come later to this topic. By the way, this principle is called preprocessor statements and it is very useful if you want to switch functionality on or off. If off, the debug code is not compiled and does not occupy any space in your flash. In the interrupt section, you see the interrupt used for the mode button and also that I use the interrupt driven ticker library for the indicator LEDs. The green LED is used as a mode indicator and it is highly recommended to be included in your design. Otherwise, it is extremely difficult to work with the devices. The select board mode reads the EEPROM and decides if it has to branch into the configuration function. Next, we read the full configuration from EEPROM and connect to the network in normal mode, which means including DNS and UDP. In configuration mode, UDP is not started. Next, we call IoT App Story. This function calls iotappstory.com and checks for new updates. If you have a close look at this functionality, you see that two calls are cascaded. If the first service does not answer, a second one is called. I use this because I have my own development server on my PC using the PHP file from video number 78. So my ESPs connect to my PC during development. Only for production I load the sketches to the iotappstory.com and remove it from my private service. By the way, if you do not want to check for updates every time the device boots, just comment this line then you still can update using a shorter button press. Or you schedule this function in another way, for example, time-based. Next, we can add a sketch-specific setup code. Here, we check if the port number entered in the configuration is valid, and if not, assign a default one. So we are done with the setup and can continue with the loop section. This section again consists of a standard part which handles the mode button and every two seconds send a debug message if the defines for debugging are done. We can add the loop section of our sketch here. Please make sure you do not use delay statements here. So we have to change our sketch a little for a non-blocking delay. Now our sketch is compatible with the platform and we can compile it. Simple. But wait, we forgot something. Do you know what? Yes, we are not able to choose the pin from our smartphone. So we go back to the enums and structures 
and find the right place to enter the definition. We just add our pin definition field here. Because it will have two characters, we add three as length. The last character in a character array is always zero. And a little down, we enter the default pin name, either as a string like D4 or we leave it blank. But you have to add something here. So the infrastructure can handle the pin number. Now we have to go to the Wi-Fi manager to add this pin that it is presented on the smartphone. For that, we go to the IoT App Story helpers file and find all the parameters of our structure. Just our pin is not there. To change that, we have to add it in three places as shown. Now it will also appear on our screen. So we are done. We can compile our first sketch and upload it to iotupstory.com. To do that, just press Ctrl, Alt and S, like Sierra. And the compiler puts a .bin file in your sketch directory. It has also the information for which module it is compiled. Here, for example, we compiled it for a Node MCU board. As always, you have to choose all the parameters for your target board. If you later download this app to a different board, it might not run. Now we go to iotupstory.com. I assume you already have your board and your project defined. If you do not know how to do this, please watch video number 105. We upload the binary file. Now it is an IoT app. Of course, it should be documented nicely. When we add the app to our project, our particular ESP board will get it as soon as it asks for an update with the function IoT App Story. Let's now assume we have a new board never used with IoTAppStory.com. Then we have to enable it to call the platform the first time. This can be done by loading the IoT App Story loader sketch. You find it on GitHub. Just compile and upload it to your board by serial. Please make sure that you press reset after this upload. Pressing reset only has to be done once, even if you are asked again and again. This is because of a flaw of the ESP. If you keep serial monitor open, you can watch what happens next. The ESP starts its own access point with the name initloader and you can connect to it. Now you should get your configuration screen and you can enter your Wi-Fi credentials. Enter a nice board name, press save and really wait for 10 seconds. Then press this link and exit. Now you see in serial that your parameters are saved in EEPROM and your ESP starts to download its app from your project. A little later, your TurboBlink version 1.0 should start and the LED on the default pin should blink. If you now want to change the pin, you press the Mode Change button, in our case the Flash button, for about 7 seconds and the ESP goes into Configuration mode. Now we have to do the same procedure as before. First, connect to the access point, this time called your first app. I'm sure you will find out where you can change this name. After connecting this network, you can enter your PIN number. Shortly after you press exit, your LED starts to blink on the new PIN. And if you start an UDP listener, you see the debugging messages also over the air. Just choose the UDP port which was entered during the configuration phase. Default is 8003. One of my viewers, Walter Steinchen, was a big help in creating this functionality. As you see, I used the program Socket Test to display the messages. A link is provided in the comment. If you have spare time, you can change your sketch for a different blink rate, upload it again to your app and reset your board. You can even disconnect it from your computer. You should not be asked any questions anymore. 
the LED should just start to blink differently. This is because the ESP has all the details in its EEPROM, like an elephant. These animals are also known that they never forget. Now I have wishes. Ono and myself put a considerable amount of work into this platform. I would be glad if these things would happen. You publish your well-documented, of course, app for other users to populate the platform. You fork my repository and propose mind-boggling enhancements for my code. And somebody writes a nice documentation to be published on GitHub, either in the readme file or as a PDF document. Documentation done by the developers are never really good. They always forget the obvious things. With these wishes in mind, I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.